Hi, my name is Lucy and I'm a children's speech and language therapist and today I'm going to be talking about input work or auditory discrimination for children with speech sound difficulties. So that's not again about children producing the words or saying the words and the sounds, it's much more about organising their speech sound system by listening um, to the words that have their particular mistake that they're making in their speech. So this is helpful for lots of children, particularly helpful for perhaps shy and reluctant children who uh, might benefit from doing some listening work, or perhaps children who um, aren't making a lot of progress with the production work and you need something different to try with them. So this activity is sound sorting. So in this example, I've got two sounds. Here I've got b, b, um, and I've got f. So a short sound and a long whooshy sound. And your speech and language therapist will tell you which sounds you need to be working on with your particular child. Um, it might not be these ones. So I have um, some printed out pictures of words that start with either the f sound or the b sound and I'm going to shuffle them all up and I'm going to say to the child that I'll be saying a word and the word might start with b, b or it might start with f and I want them to listen to my word and put the, put the word with the sound that it starts with. So I would say fork and the child would have a listen, have a think and put the word in the pot. So the next word is fair, the child would have a listen, have a think, put the word in the pot. The next word is ball ball, have a listen, have a think, put the word in the b pot. So we would carry on like that with the child putting the words in the pots. And then when you finished, you would have a look together at the words that the child has sorted for you. So I would say, okay, all these words then start with b. Let's have a look. Ball, yes. Boy, yes, B. So you would go through checking with the child that all the words have gone in the right place. Maybe they've made a little mistake. Let's imagine fan has gone in the B pot. So I would spread the words out on the table and say to the child, oh, I can see a word that doesn't belong. I can see a word with a F sound. Which one's that? and see if they can just have a look and have a think. You might then need to say the words for the child. B, yeah, boy, fam, and see if they can pick up on that mistake that they've made. So the first way we play this game is for you, as the teacher or teaching assistant, to say the words for the child. So you would be saying bed, boy, or fish, Fan, and the child is then listening to your correct production of that word. The second level of difficulty, if you like, would then be to switch it up and for the child to have the word and to say the word for themselves. Children then tend to find this activity much harder because they're relying on their own production, which might not always be correct. So at the end, when you come to look which words have ended up being sorted into which pot, you might find more mistakes when the child has had to rely on their own production. The third level of difficulty, and this is sort of the ultimate level that you're wanting your child to get to, is for everybody to think of the word in the head, in their head. So I would say to the child, now I'm going to zip my lips up, I'm not going to say the word. You zip your lips up, you don't say the word. I want you to look at that word, think about it in your head, and have a think what sound 
that word starts with. Um, and this is even more difficult for the child because then they're relying on their own sort of internal representation of that word. So you can see with my pictures that they have the written word um, already on here. Ideally, if you're sorting pictures, you would not have a written word, you just have the picture because some children will simply be able to look at the letter that it starts with and put it in the pot according to the, according to the written letter, which isn't really the idea of, of the activity because it's more about listening work. However, some children, if the activity is new to them and particularly difficult, might benefit from having that um, written word as well because then it's an extra clue.